Thank you, Wendy. We still have a couple of cameras on, I noticed. Well, you're live, Chair. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. Um, we are live streaming this meeting once again. It's a, a, the second annual general meeting we've, we've done via the live stream remotely. So I will just read out the way that this will op be operated for those of you who are joining us for the first time. This full council meeting is being held fully remotely and in accordance with the temporary legislation that allows the council to continue to operate in an open and transparent way. Decisions made at today's meeting are just as applicable as in traditional meeting settings, provided the number of members in attendance ensures the meeting remains quorate. I would like to remind members that this meeting is still being live streamed to the public, and can I request that you all switch off your cameras and mute your microphones when you're not speaking, and also ensure you have your chat bar open for voting purposes. At this point, I would like to welcome and congratulate Councillor Christopher Edwards, recently elected member for St King's Mark Chepstow, to his first meeting today. Points of order can be written into the chat bar, as can moving and seconding items. There will be a raised hand facility for each agenda item in the chat bar, so please ensure you locate the correct one for that particular item. Since our last meeting, His Royal Highness Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, very sadly passed away. And I would like to ask that we observe appearance of silence, period of silence for Prince Philip, colleagues, members of staff, families and friends, and all whom have passed away since our last annual general meeting and since we last met. Thank you all very much. I would like now would like to ask if there, if there are any apologies for absence. Councillor Watts, Chair. Thank you very much. That was Councillor Eason, was it? Yes, um, we had an email. Right, thank you. Councillor Green. And Council Greenland, I understand. Do we have any others? Thank you. Declarations of interest can be expressed now or they can be done as and when during the course of the meeting. Do we have any declarations of interest at this point? Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the election of a chairman for the civic year 2021 to 2022. Madam Chairman, before you take that, can I um, address the council? Yes, indeed. And before you do, Councillor Fox, can I congra congratulate you and Councillor Laura Jones on your recent appointment to the Welsh Senate? We, we know that Monmouthshire will be in very safe hands. Thank you. Councillor Fox. Well, th th thank you, Madam Chairman, for, for, for those kind words. I hope I and uh, I'm sure Laura agrees that we'll we'll do our very best to to uh, represent the county. Um, today is an important day in our, in our calendar as a council, isn't it? It's uh, our our AGM. And uh, um, Madam Chair, today um, signals the end of certainly a challenging two years uh, for you as our chairman. Um, I don't think in the history of our council um, has there ever been a more difficult period for a chairman to preside over. 
Um, and you've provided uh, such outstanding service to this council and uh, I think we are all grateful uh, for that. You've led us through um, its virtual existence in a manner that has uh, protected the integrity of our democratic function and maintained an organised delivery of the expectations placed on us and we thank you uh, for the way you've done that. Your calm and measured and balanced approach to kept proceedings on track even when things are uh, going pear-shaped behind the scenes and I know there's been times where you've kept your cool and and uh, that's been happening. Um, you have sort of mastered the art of conducting meetings via teams and managed to keep your, your cool when others haven't including uh, me in that. Uh, you've always been extremely fair and balanced and conducted things in a very uh, professional way. But you've also carried out this role in a far wider way than just the management of meetings. Uh, you take a deep interest in the well-being of all of us and our staff, especially through those dark and difficult months that we've gone through. Uh, you would contact people, check they're OK. You'd offer comfort for those who needed it in difficult times. And uh, those attributes just demonstrate the sort of lady you are, a kind, considerate and caring individual. You couldn't have done a, a more in your term of office Sheila, you can be justly proud of your achievements and, you know, to do two years in a run through such difficult conditions is, uh, you know, it, it, we, we're ever thank we'll be ever thankful for. I'm sorry that the circumstances of the pandemic and everything have prevented you from engaging in person with our citizens as you would have liked. And I hope that once we are finally out of this pandemic, um, and we return to some levels of normality that this council perhaps will ask you once again to take the office so you can enjoy a more traditional and fulfilling year as chairman. Uh, so Sheila, on behalf of the council and certainly on behalf of the Conservative group, I thank you most sincerely for all you have done and I wish you and Chris the very best going forward. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Box. I must be honest, this is even more challenging today doing it as a hybrid meeting, <laughs> looking at the screen as opposed to my computer. Madam, Madam Chair, I, I'm sure that um, other leaders of other groups may wish to uh, also uh, say a few words. Yes, of course. I don't have a chat bar at the moment, so I haven't seen any sort of indication. Possibly I've missed it. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, um, I, I, I don't know if Dimitri comes before me. Um, I don't know if he's online now at the moment. As, as, as opposition uh, leader. If he's not there, uh, Dimitri. Um, oh, okay. okay. OK, Madam Chair, um, may I step in then? I'm sure Dimitri will want to say some words. Um, Madam Chair, on behalf of the independent group, uh, Val, um, Francis, Debbie and David and myself, um, we need we want to and we need to congratulate you on your on your, on your two years. Mm -hmm. of service. And what more can you say than, than the leader has just said on the basis of um, it's not been uh, a year or 18 months that you would have wanted because I do remember the first six months of your leadership as chairman. You were outstanding. I remember going to a couple of events there and, and you, you represented um, them events. I think it was dementia in Abergavenny. I think there was the wine, um, the wine event up at the, um, the wine yard in Abergavenny there. And I know my wife went there as well. She said, you know, I mean, what a wonderful lady. And I'm sure Monmouthshire um, will miss you on the basis of you weren't allowed to go out there in 15 months. Peter elaborated on that, but I'm sure that you and your husband uh, would have been exemplary out there, and I'm sure you still will be. You've no need to be chair to do that, Chair. Um, but Sheila Woodhouse, as I know, you are uh, one of them people who will go out there and help anyone. So on behalf of us, on behalf of the people of Monmouthshire, 
we wish you well. Keep up the hard work and, and dementia and Alzheimer's is something I know you're very um, keen to promote and help uh, reference to the, the needs that are out there. So we wish you well and hopefully see you around the place and keep your hard work going. And we'll see you on adults. Hopefully you'll be back on adults with us as well. Thank you, Sheila. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. Councillor Howard. I did see John pop up, yes. Councillor Watkins. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm going to have to keep this rather brief as I'm losing my voice. So I'm not going to pontificate for very long, but Sheila, you have been an exemplary chair. It's been amazing watching you handle the great changes that the council has had to go through with moving to online meetings. And you have handled that with dignity and with grace. And I've always felt that you've been incredibly fair in your dealings. And so thank you very much for your service. And I do look forward again for us spending maybe a little bit more time on committees together because we've normally had a, a very interesting discussion and time on those. So thank you again for your time now. Much appreciated. Thank you very much, Councillor Watkins, Joe. OK. Well, it's always very difficult to um, to know what to say when people have been so kind. You've all been extremely kind. Thank you very, very much for your kind words. However, these past two years could not have been more different, as has already been mentioned. Year one was extremely pleasurable, getting to know chairman, mayors and councillors from other counties, having the great privilege of representing Monmouthshire and being able to promote our lovely county, which is such a high reputation and, in my opinion, one of the best in Wales. Unfortunately, we're not able to continue with our traditional fundraising activities for my chosen charities, Alzheimer's Cymru and Gwent Music Support. But thanks to members and friends, we will within the next few weeks be able to give donations to both of these worthy courses. There's so many people to thank for their support and guidance. My deputy Brian Jones and his good lady Rose. Brian has not experienced the best of health recently, so I'm very pleased that Brian has joined us today and give you my best wishes for a speedy recovery to good health, Brian. Reverend Councillors Bob Greenland and Malcolm Lane for their spiritual help and guidance, especially when my chaplain moved away, for their thoughtful and most appropriate prayers during this difficult time when we've all experienced the loss of colleagues, family and friends. My right hand helper Linda, who throughout these most challenging days has been the most tremendous support, a rock I could rely on. And I also thank very much Julia and Steve who offered Chris and I the most enormous assistance. I must also mention each and every member for their patience, tolerance and respect. And in particular, their willingness to adapt to the very different way we've, had, we've all had to work together to ensure our vital services and meetings continue. During this most challenging period, unprecedented times, Paul Matthews and his team have excelled demonstrating good, strong leadership and direction, helping us all in our and our excellent workforce to not just confront problems, but to have vision and determination to overcome and see us all through what has no doubt been the most challenging period since World War II. Paul, we are indebted to you and all the staff of Monash County Council, perhaps in better times, we can all join together in a celebration of thanks. It's difficult to name people, but I want to say a special thanks to John Pearson and his team who led the way in enabling us to resume our council meetings for his support and encouragement to us all in the way he shares his knowledge and expertise. It's been a great privilege also during these past two years to meet many loyal members of staff at long service events, initially in person, but good to see they are continuing virtually. To all leaders of political groups, thank you for your contributions to all that is good in this beautiful county. Again, I, over the past two years, I've relied on many past chairmen for advice and support, including Peter and Maureen, and of course, one at home, who I've given the title of my professional advisor to, to Chris, always there for me, and spurring me on during these uncertain days. 
for his invaluable support and most especially for his patients. And I thank my family and friends for all their help, mostly moral support during the last 13 months for obvious reasons. To the incoming chairman and vice chairman, I offer all the support I can in knowing this coming year will be a different and challenging one, but I am confident you will do a splendid job. At this point, I would like to once again thank my vice chairman, Brian Jones and his wife Rose for their support during the past two years. And I understand Brian would like to say a few words. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. Um, it's um, and thank you for your kind words. <coughs> I, um, I I can only say um, and, and, uh, my regret really today because I, I don't feel well enough to proceed to the chair of MCC since I have a few Christmas. I feel less able to cope with the pressures of office and I would have this probably. I am sad not to be taking up the office of chair and I, I was quite looking forward to it having done quite a bit of the job last year on those occasions when you couldn't do things and it really was very, it was a real eye opener for me, um, you know, to, to, to visit these other councils and so on. So it's it's quite sad that I'm not doing it now. But what I got to say is that it's a great honour to take the office of chairman of MCC, but it's quite important to be fit for the role. And at the moment, I do not think that I'm well enough to do the job. Um, Matt Feekins will will make an ab admirable replacement for me. And um, I wish him every success in his year of office. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Jones. And we do wish you well and, and your health comes first. So I hope you make a speedy recovery and, and restore to good health. And we look forward to you joining us again in the not too distant future and best wishes to Rose. Thank you very much. OK. The next item on the agenda is the election of a chairman for the civic year 2021 to 2022. Thank you. Madam Chair, <coughs> uh, I'd like to uh, nominate in a second, but firstly, before I just do, can I, it was great to see you on, Brian. Um, um, I am uh, really pleased uh, you managed to make today and uh, I thank you for all your efforts over the last two years as well. I know it's been a challenging time for you and our thoughts are with you and uh, it was great to see you. Um, Madam Chair, um, it gives me great pleasure um, to propose uh, Councillor Matt Feakin to be our chairman for the forthcoming year. Um, Matt has proved himself as an excellent member of this council his vast experience and astute business acumen have been an asset to this organisation. Matt is also a member of Town Council and has only just recently um, finished or will be finishing shortly, I'm not 100% sure, Mayor for last year and I know what esteem he was held in by the uh, Monmouth Town Council and the, and the residents. Um, Matt was born in Carmarthen um, but was schooled in Somerset. Um, Matt has always been uh, a team player and I know that from in our group but in his early days he was a team player he was enjoy enjoying the first 15 and the first 11 and the county squad uh, for athletics where where he was but after leaving school Matt returned to the family farm that was in his blood just outside of, of, of uh, Monmouth and uh, he worked on that farm for for, for 10 years before leaving the country to further his ambition and I was quite blown away when I read what what Matt's actually done and I'll bet he's only told us a little a little bit of it 
He was one of the er very early pioneers of the uh, internet. And, uh, and Matt uh, migrated to the Caribbean and established one of the very first internet lotteries in the world. And whilst there, he also established several related companies to include an online payment gateway and offshore bank. He later swapped the tropical climate and island life for a new venture offering offshore uh, legal services in, the so in southern Spain. Um, and then returning for family reasons, uh, Matt then had to sort of start over uh, again um, and, and went back to uh, more manual labour for, uh, for a while, doing all of those uh, hard things which uh, we have to do now and again. But uh, saving up over a number of years, he trained as an electrician and quickly grew an electro electrical contracting business, which blossomed into renewables and culminated into becoming the principal contractor on over £70 million worth of solar PV developments across the UK, building out over 500,000 solar panels, which continue to provide electricity today for over 50,000 uh, homes. Matt continues to be actively involved in renewables and energy and has since returned to his roots in farming in Monmouthshire. He's a member of the Energy Institute, Institute of Engineering and Technology and the Institute of Directors. So Madam Chairman, we can see that Matt is a man of many talents and much experience and he will be a fantastic ambassador for this council as we emerge to the normality from this devastating period of our lives. So Madam Chairman, I once again propose Matt Feakin as chair for the ensuing year and do so move. Do we have a seconder for the nomination? Madam Chair, I have a great pleasure in seconding the nomination. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Councillors, good afternoon. It's uh, Matt Phillips here, the uh, monitoring officer. Can I ask, are there any further nominations, either if you could speak or, or write any names into the chat bar, please? I'm not seeing any hands up or any anything being written in. So as there's uh, no further nominations, please, uh, once, once the voting bar comes up, could you indicate your vote preference for or against Councillor Matt Feekins to be elected as Chairman of the Council. So we're just waiting for the um, for the voting function to come up, if you'll bear with us. Okay, councillors, I can see we've had 31 votes cast uh, so far. Um, it, it's very clearly um, carried as a majority. Uh, therefore, I now invite uh, the County Councillor Matt Feekins to read and sign his declaration of acceptance of office. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Sheila. Um, <clears throat> I, Matthew Feekins, having been elected to the office of chairman of Monmouthshire County Council, declare that I take that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. I undertake to observe the code for the time being as to the conduct which is expected of members of Monmouthshire County Council and which may be revised from time to time. And that will be signed. Very much. 
Thank you very much. So thank you very much, uh, members. Thank you very much, uh, Sheila. Con many congratulations. I know you do a splendid job. No, not at all. Thank you. I'm still blushing from, from that, uh, Pracy. Uh, but uh, thank you very much, members all. Um, so moving on to um, item 10. No, sorry, I've got 10 on my list. Um, what I'd like to do is to do introduce my chaplain for the year. Uh, and I'd be very, very fortunate to have uh, the Venerable Terry Van, Bishop of Monmouth, to agree to be my chaplain. And uh, if Bishop Van is with us, I'd like to go to you now to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, um, Councillor Feekins. And can I, first of all, add my congratulations to you on your election. Um, and to thank you for inviting me to become your chaplain, which is a real privilege. Um, you have asked me to say a few words, so um, councillors may or may not know that I've been here about 15 months in the Diocese of Monmouth, so here for about six weeks uh, in post before the first lockdown, so it's been an interesting start to my uh, ministry here. Um, I came from uh, Manchester where I'd been serving for 30 years or so, um, an extraordinarily diverse diocese, uh, multi-faith, multilingual areas, uh, some areas of great wealth, many more of significant poverty. And there, the church is sought to be a cohesive force for the community, working with schools, local councils, community leaders, to bring people from massively diverse backgrounds to work together. And as Bishop of Monmouth, I want to bring some of that experience with me and work in partnership with others towards building a society of opportunity for everyone and communities where no one gets left behind. I'm really grateful to Councillor Feekins that he's expressed a willingness to keep me abreast of the issues, but also to invite me to join him on some of his visits in the course of his work as councillor and chair. Um, and that will give me a really important opportunity to meet with members of the communities both that both you and I serve in different ways, to hear their stories and work with them in addressing the issues and challenges that people face. As the Church in Wales, we have church communities in almost every community of the county and uh, I will be wanting to encourage and support them, our clergy, our lay leaders, our church members, to work similarly with organisations and people such as yourselves to create a better society for all in the villages and towns of Monmouthshire. There is, of course, great need in our communities, but we have a unique opportunity as we begin to emerge from the pandemic and with the elections that have just taken place. And I hope that I can support you, Councillor Feekins, and all of the councillors in their work and work with you in the coming year to address the challenges and make the most of the opportunities. So thank you again for giving me the honour of being your chaplain over the coming year. Thank you. very much Terry for that uh, and yes I'm looking forward to the next year uh, with you uh, and uh, it will be interesting as we move forward into uh, the relaxation of the rules. Um, what I'd also like to do is just to announce um, my charity for the forthcoming year. It will be the Prince's Countryside Fund uh, which supports countryside issues and farmers and uh, and it's a, it's a great cause and I'm looking forward to working on that as well. Um, moving on to item four on the agenda. I now call for the nominations for the Office of Vice Chairman of the Council for the Civic Year 2021 to 2022. Councillor Penny Jones. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chair. And may I congratulate you, Councillor Feekins, on your post. Um, best wishes for the future. I'm sure you'll do brilliantly. But I'm here to nominate Councillor Anne Webb, and I'd just like to say a bit about her. She was born in Middlesex and started her working life in banking. However, after 17 years, Anne and her husband opted for a complete change, so moved to Trellick Grange in 1979 and started farming. And this is where they live to present day with their son and his family. 
Following up on her interest in local government, Anne became the community clerk for Trellick before moving on to take that post in Raglan. She was then clerk to Monmouth Town Council for 10 years before becoming a county councillor in 2004 rep representing St Arvins and Tinton Ward. She, Anne has been chair of Wye Valley Area of Outstanding Natural Beauty, Joint Advisory Committee, Brecon Beacons Park. She's a member on the Strong Communities Committee, Licensing, Welsh Church Fund, SACRA and Planning. She is also a member of Landogo School Governors and Monmouth Business Forum. So bearing in mind this wealth of experience, Chair, I nominate Councillor Anne Webb for the Office of Vice Chairman for the ensuing year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Jones. And is that seconded, please? Chairman, if I could second that nomination. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Pratt. Are there any further nominations? If so, please write the name of the nomination in the chat bar. I'm not seeing any further nominations and so I'll move forward. Uh, as there are no further nominations, please can you indicate your vote preference for or against Councillor Anne Webb to be elected as the Vice Chairman of the Council? Put that into the chat bar now as the vote. So we've now had um, just over 30 um, responses and it is overwhelmingly um, in favour of Anne. So uh, Councillor Webb, I now invite Councillor Webb to read and sign the Declaration of Acceptance of Office. Thank you, Matt. Hi, Anne Webb. Having been elected to the Office of Vice Chairman of Monmouthshire County Council, declare that I take that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. I undertake to observe the code for the time being as to the conduct which is expected of members of Monmouthshire County Council and which may be revised from time to time. Yeah. Did you wish to address the council? Yes, thank you. Um, thank you, Penny and Jane, for proposing me as vice chair and to Brian for taking on vice chair for the past year. Thank you. I take this appointment as a privilege and will promote this council whenever the opportunity arises. We are members, we as members are blessed with officers and staff we have. They are the backbone of this authority and I thank them. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Webb. Um, the, uh, we, we are going to move around the offices, etc. now. So we will um, take a 10 minute recess and uh, we'll look to join you again at uh, 14.45, so just over 10 minutes. Thank you very much all.
John, John Pearson, are you there? No. He's not. Can I help? Oh, okay. yeah, it's, it's, it's Peter. I've got the SRS box come up, so it's going to restart my computer anytime and I can't do anything about it. So can oh. I? Um, I don't know how long it'll take to 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 load whatever's going to be loaded. Hmm. Um, There's no way of just pausing. No, I can't. It won't, it won't let me. Uh, it, it'll go, it's going to do it automatically in 27 minutes. So to, so oh. I I'm not sure um, if I have to restart it now and just do it now. Yeah, I would I'd try that. Otherwise, just, I'll have to come yeah, back. We've, got, we've got 10 minutes, so yeah, yeah try doing that go now. On, go on to your iPad, Peter. Yeah, I might have to go on the iPad if worse comes worse. Right. Yeah. I'll try okay. it. I'll try it. OK, thanks, Nicola. All right, any problems, let me know. OK. Nicola. Um, yeah, just to, just to know we are still live streaming. Yeah, Nicola, it's it's Martin Grogan here. Just got a query. Um, I see that Bob Greenland has sent apologies. Uh, do you know uh, what will happen by way of getting a response to my question when we get to that point? Um, yes, I believe uh, Sarah Jones is planning on providing a response if you're happy with that. Yep, that's great. Thanks for ever so much. All right then. Back on now, great.
Dimitri got problems on his computer. Jim, I can see you and David perfectly all right. OK. Councillors, right. hello. Um, I, I feel like the continuity uh, announcer here, um, but just to say we're just struggling to get the chair back on to the uh, laptop, so just bear with us for a, a little bit longer, please. OK, welcome back, members. Uh, Paul's currently lent me his computer for the for the next section. Uh, so I apologise if the name comes up is Paul. Moving on through the agenda. We've got agenda item number five, public questions, which we haven't been made aware of any. And moving on to item six, petitions, which we've had none presented to us. And then moving on to item number seven, which is to elect the leader of the council and to receive notification of leader delegations appointments to the cabinet. Councillor John. Uh, Mr. Chair, yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, <clears throat> can I congratulate you on uh, um, taking up your office? That change suits you, and uh, I love the background with uh, Monmouthshire on it, uh, and. Uh, I know you're going to do a, a great job. Anyway, to the item in hand, it's a strange one for me to do, uh, but uh, today um, it gives me great pleasure to nominate Councillor Richard John as the leader of this council for the ensuing year. As an outgoing leader, I feel pretty well qualified to make this nomination and have no hesitation in doing so. When I first met Richard, I knew uh, he had the potential to be a future leader. I could always see it. He's an extremely intelligent and astute, yet moderate and caring uh, individual, and he is passionate about public service and about our county. I had such confidence in him that as a new joining member, <coughs> excuse me, in 2017, I brought him into the cabinet and gave him the challenging, I think probably the most challenging portfolio of education. And uh, I just knew he could do it and, uh, and I knew he could do it well. And he's proven that to us all in spades. And I thank Richard for the work he's done in, in that portfolio. And over the last four years, uh, I have to say he's been an outstanding cabinet member, someone who has earned the uh, respect and trust of officers and members alike, and that is really important. Richard is also already well respected across Wales by his peers and within the WLGA. He's forged good and strong relationships that are so important in the leadership role, especially in the local government world as it is uh, right now, where there is this growing need for us to work regionally across political boundaries, especially as we emerge now from the pandemic. And Richard has all of the attributes uh, to be able to do that successfully on behalf of our, our county. So, Mr Chairman, I am more than confident that Richard will champion the needs of this county and the people we serve and he will prove to be an out, absolutely outstanding leader. So um, uh, I move his nomination, uh, Mr Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Fox. Do you have a second death for that, please? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I would very much like to second Councillor John as leader of Monmouthshire County Council. Thank you very much, Councillor Sarah Jones. Um, do we have any further nominations? No, if not, we'll go to um, to we, we haven't we haven't received any further nominations, so that's accepted. That do we, Matt? Okay. So we'll just wait for that to come up in uh, in the, uh, the the vote mechanism to come up in the chat bar, please. Just bear with us, please.
Thank you very much. Well, we had 35 votes in and it's uh, um, overwhelmingly in favour of uh, Councillor Richard John to become uh, the leader of the council. So congratulations to you, Richard. Uh, if I can hand over to you now. Thank you very much, sir. Well, um, good afternoon, everyone. And um, can I thank uh, Peter and Sarah for their uh, for, for their nominations? And, and also, can I, can I thank thank you as well, Mr. Chairman? And congratulations on on your position. You were a very impressive uh, mayor of, of Monmouth last year, and you you brought such um, gravitas to the to, to the role. I have every confidence that you will um, keep all of us in order in this this uh, last year of, of this term. Um, members, can I can I start just by thanking all of you? I feel really humbled by the um, honour that you've bestowed on me um, this afternoon. It's a, a real privilege to be elected leader of Monmouthshire County Council at such a, a critical point in the uh, in the county's recovery from uh, from the pandemic. It's been a, a really challenging 12 months for so many of, of our residents. Um, now, I I remember um, quite vividly the drama of election night in 2017, and I remember feeling that, that sense of privilege, uh, feeling really privileged that the people of Mitchell Troy had put their faith in me, but I also felt this um, a uh, deep sense of responsibility that I had a, a big job to do and, and expectations to to meet. And I feel that same sense of uh, of responsibility this afternoon. And, you know, the public are naturally very cynical of, of people who enter politics. And I, I understand why. But until I joined Monmouthshire County Council uh, four years ago, I'd never worked with such a group of dedicated and public spirited individuals you are all champions in your respective communities and i know how hard you all work um, in your individual wards to, to make them better places to live and i know that that commitment transcends any political differences that that we might have and i will never forget the reason why we all came into public life to to make a difference to improve the lives of our residents to improve the services that they can access to ensure that our communities are economically economically vibrant and to maximize the opportunities open to children and young people so there will be times in this virtual chamber where there are things on which we we disagree but i can promise you i will always strive to find the common ground between Labour, the Liberal Democrats, the Independents and my own group, because there will always be more that brings us together than that which divides us. Um, and that I can promise you that that will be my focus. I'd like to congratulate Peter and Laura on on their success last week. Um, I was absolutely delighted by by their results and I, I know that both of them will be banging the drum really hard for Monmouthshire in, in Cardiff Bay. I was also sorry that that Joe Watkins wasn't elected on the regional list because I know that she too would have made a really diligent and hardworking member of the Senate uh, for our county. Um, but clearly the, the Senate's loss is Monmouthshire County Council's gain. Over the last four years, I've had the privilege of working with some extremely talented officers, all experts in their field and dedicated to doing everything they can for the life chances of young people. Um, I was very grateful for, for the opportunity to, to serve in, in Cabinet and um, I've been really fortunate to have worked with some of the best local government officers in Wales in this organisation. On Friday, I met with and thanked our uh, 30 plus head teachers for the time that I've been able to spend with them over the last four years, visiting their schools, picking their brains and seeing firsthand the, the work that they and their staff undertake day in, day out to support our children and young people. I've been really fortunate in, in my role and I, I feel I've had some fantastic opportunities. It was a real privilege to um, open two brand new secondary schools in Monmouth and Caldercott and to set in motion plans for another brand new school in Abergavenny. 
I've led a review of our additional learning needs provision, which resulted in plans for far better provision for some of our most vulnerable children. We've changed catchment areas so more Monmouthshire pupils will have the chance of going to the best local schools. And we've driven up standards of leadership in our schools and so much more. I've also really enjoyed working with the Mon Life team, overseeing active travel, leisure, sport, outdoor education, play, and I, I suppose effectively being the, the cabinet member for fun. Um, it's been really important to me that we've retained our commitment to the outdoor education service. We've modernized our leisure offer in-house and we've been expanding opportunities for, for walking and cycling. So I, I feel really privileged. Uh, I feel really lucky about the opportunities I've had uh, over the last four years. Now, in putting together my new cabinet, I wanted to achieve a blend of experience and innovation. A cabinet of diverse backgrounds, but united by an ambition to make Monmouthshire an even better place in which to live, work and play. As we, as we emerge from the pandemic, there'll be a greater focus on the well-being of our, of our citizens, aligned with our ongoing commitment to tackling social injustices. So, my new cabinet members are Sarah Jones, Deputy Leader and Cabinet Member for Economy. Bob Greenland, Deputy Leader and Cabinet Member for Governance and Strategic Planning. Lisa Dimmock, Cabinet Member for Community Wellbeing and Social Justice. Paul Pavia, Cabinet Member for Education. Henny Jones, Cabinet Member for Social Care, Safeguarding and Health. Jane Pratt, Cabinet Member for Infrastructure and Neighbourhood Services. And Phil Murphy, Cabinet Member for Resources. I have every confidence that this is a team which is as dynamic and progressive as any in Wales. Now in the final 12 months of this council term, my team will be doing everything we can to continue delivering on the promises in our manifesto, encapsulated in Monmouthshire County Council's corporate plan and condensed into our plan on a page. New schools, better play facilities, opportunities for the most disadvantaged, upgraded leisure centres, better roads, dignity in social care, on the side of small businesses, better opportunities for walking and cycling. This will be an administration which continues to play its full part on the regional and national stage, working closely with neighbouring authorities where our interests so frequently align and working with both Welsh and UK governments. Geographically, in Monmouthshire, we're the gateway to Wales and politically, we're so often a key link in the relationship between councils and government. I'd like to congratulate Sarah Jones on becoming Monmouthshire's first ever female deputy leader. Sarah has always been a trailblazer and not just on the ski slopes. She'll bring a wealth of experience to her new economic brief. And I'm delighted that Bob Greenland, who's been a loyal, dedicated, and at times fierce deputy leader, is continuing, continuing in cabinet. And all of us look forward to benefiting from Bob's considerable experience in public service. I'm proud to say that this cabinet is Monmouthshire's first ever to be balanced by gender, and only the third in the country. The more representative we are as a body of 43 councillors of the people we speak for, the better we will be able to perform our roles. And I want to say more about this in the future. Now, I'm very aware that I'm stepping into a pretty big pair of size 12s in this role. The way in which Peter Fox has led this authority for 13 years, has won him plaudits from across the political spectrum. He's had a better working relationship with many local authority leaders and ministers than between those in the same political party. Peter is a man who refuses to be limited by the usual um, restrictions of party politics. Peter is a great collabor collaborator. He'll work with anyone to get the job done. He played a critical role in negotiating the Cardiff Capital Region City deal for which he was awarded his OBE. 
Throughout my time in Monmouthshire, Peter Fox has been my leader, my boss, my mentor, and I'm proud to say my friend. A more genuine, caring and humble man you could not meet. And I feel so fortunate that um, my time in politics has brought us together. They say that a great leader doesn't create followers. A great leader creates more leaders. And that's what Peter's done. He's inspired so many of us to believe in ourselves, to strive, to achieve the best that we can for the people of this county. Peter has always given us the freedom to find our own path, but he's always been there in a supportive capacity. I know he's not leaving us just yet, but he's now in an exciting new role that I know he will make his own. I know that Peter won't let being in opposition get in the way of doing everything he can to stand up for his constituency. Peter, the impact that you have made on this institution is impossible to overstate. Over the last 25 years that Monmouthshire has existed as a local authority, you have been a councillor for 23 years, in the cabinet for almost 20, and leader for 13 years. I'm sure I speak for the entire council when I thank you for everything you have done for the people of Monmouthshire. You, know, you may now be fighting for them in a different arena, but your inherent drive to right injustices, that dogged determination that we've come to know to make the world a better place. And most important of all, your kind hearted approach to everything you do will be all too clear for all of us to see. So Peter, on behalf of all of us in Monmouthshire, thank you for everything you've done. And can I thank you all um, for uh, voting for me this afternoon? And I look forward to working with all of you over the next 12 months. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Councillor John. Um, I've been notified in the chat bar that uh, Councillor Simon Howarth would like to speak. Simon. Yes, thank you, Chair, and um, congratulations on your appointment. I'm sure you, um, you'll carry out your duties uh, with exemplary uh, effort and um, look forward to seeing you around the uh, Monmouthshire. May I just say a few words for Peter? I've known Peter uh, many, many years, even before Council, um, and I met Peter on a political level uh, during um, the closure of Darren Vellard and Clear Up Schools, rightly or wrongly, and we won't go there, but um, he was always honest and very uh, forward in, in, in listening. Um, so what I will take with Peter is, is when you do go down to uh, Cardiff now is please not forget where you're from. It's the end of the day. That is the most important thing is, is remember. And that applies to uh, Councillor Jones also. Uh, we are we are Monmouthshire and that's what you put there to do. So I wish you luck and I'm sure he will work extremely hard for us down there. But I'd like to see him back in Monmouthshire as well, uh, whether whether it's in the next term or what. I, I want him to come into the chamber and 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 and, and, and be scrutinised as well. And and I say we 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 as Monmouthshire every every February and March with budgets, um, we we we're getting the daggers out and doing this. Now it's his job now to go down there and and, and fight for the cause. Secondly, may I thank um, the uh, or may i um, congratulate the new leader uh, i'm sure um, his shoes will be uh, as wide and as heavy as what peter's was um, i don't know what size he is but one thing peter always did was he always left that door open for us uh, if we wanted to go in there and i, I i'd say um, councillor john i'm sure that will be the same as with yourself as opposition we will work we will scrutinize with you all um, that's our job uh, but as together as a collective team, I think we've done very well. And I think the last 18 months have shown that Monmouthshire um, has been a place which uh, has been one of them areas which uh, we, we've managed to keep our head above water and uh, hopefully 
as the years go by now in Monmouth, uh, we can strive the economic the economy side of this uh, with, with 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 the council and with the city deal as well. You know, we we'll be looking, we're investing in that. We'll be looking now to have some something from the city deal as well. So I'll just remind our our representation down there that um, it, uh, it's something that we we haven't let go. So we expect uh, the city deal to give something back to Monmouth. Um, Good luck, and Chair Peter and uh, Councillor John, uh, we wish you all well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Simon. Uh, Councillor John, did you have um, something else to read out? Yes, um, thank you. So, um, Bob Greenland, um, who has been Peter's deputy for uh, the the last thirteen years? Wanted to, uh, you, oh, Bob, Bob has joined just in the nick of time. Bob, I was going to read your speech for you. I'll hand over to Bob Greenland if that's okay, Mr. Chairman. Uh, absolutely, Councillor Greenland. Thank you and congratulations, Chair. I'm sorry if I am going to repeat anything that anybody else has said, uh, because I literally have only just come in. But I did really want to, to um, say a few words here about Peter. I suppose it was, well, it is, isn't it? 13 years ago that Peter was first elected leader of the council. And he has been by far the longest serving uh, leader in the history of Monmouthshire County Council and, and also um, it, right throughout Wales, actually. Um, but his work as a councillor in Monmouthshire started a few years before that when, and I did just catch the end of a couple of remarks that uh, Councillor Howarth was uh, saying, um, and a few years before that when he was chair of the Select Committee for Education. And then he took on, what, what is, I have to say, one of the most difficult tasks that can be faced by anyone in that position. He oversaw the closure and the amalgamation process of several of our small schools and he led it from the front. There is where he learnt that the job of a councillor can be challenging in the face of sometimes quite hostile opposition and that's certainly the case when you're trying to close schools. But I think people who uh, met him then and have known him since then have actually come to regard him as friends, although they were vehemently opposed to him at the time. And the reason is that Peter has this great humility in his personality and he can see things from other people's point of view as well. But he doesn't shy away from the right decisions, even though they may be difficult. And that was certainly the case when he was um, doing the school closure and amalgamation process. But he did so because he knew that in the long term, that was the uh, showing the best outcome for the children in this county. Now, I first met Peter when I was elected in 2004, and I've served uh, as, as his deputy since he was first elected at le as leader in 2008 and I've seen his leadership style mature as he continued to to learn from the experiences that he gained and during that time I think it's fair to say he has enjoyed the unanimous backing of all in the controlling group and that's a rare uh, rare thing to happen in politics at any level and in any party He's a good listener, so essential in leadership, but he doesn't, as I said before, doesn't shine away from shy away from difficult decisions. I've watched him support his cabinet members and he will back them to the hilt in difficult decisions. But if the time comes where he believes those decisions are wrong, then he'll step in. What makes him unique in leaders is his ability to get on with people from all walks of life. He himself has experienced the ups and downs that life can throw on any one of us. But he's lived it outside of this political bubble. 
and he feels people's pain when speaking to those who are themselves going through hard times. Equally, he has a rapport with um, with all of us as councillors. He has a rapport with other politicians of all parties throughout Wales. He has a rapport with business people uh, and he certainly works well with the chief executive uh, and with all of our officers here in the county. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say a bad word about Peter. He is genuinely a great guy. I used to wonder what the expression man of the people meant, but now I know Peter Fox is the epitome of a true man of the people. And it is his unique combination of experience, his empathy and his humility that will make him so valuable to our national scene in Cardiff Bay. Now, both of us said at the beginning of this term four years ago that this would be our last in an executive role in Monmouthshire. And one of the reasons was that we could see a whole raft of new potential leaders coming up, coming forward. And really, when you're talking about succession, that's what everybody wants to see, because all of us and some of it, and me particularly, have probably reached my sell by date at the moment. But I don't think either of us saw that the change in his leadership would end now, one year before the end of the term. So for me today is it's a bittersweet moment. I and we all will be losing a, a great colleague. But I can see that Wales will be the winner. And Peter and I have not just been good colleagues, but we have been and have become more close friends during the years. And I'm sure that that will continue for as long as we're both around. So just finally, Chairman, on behalf of the people of this county, many of whom will never know the debt of gratitude that they owe him. And on behalf of members past and present of the Conservative group, may I thank you, Pete, for all you have done and of course, wish you well in the new challenges that will face you in Cardiff Bay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Greenland. Uh, Councillor Joe Watkins. Thank you very much. Um, as my other colleagues have all been saying things about Peter, I would also like to offer the Liberal Democrats gratitude and thanks for the leadership that Peter has shown for us during this current council term. Peter has always been a kind and compassionate man and that has shown through with his leadership. Um, and I believe he will be a very hard act for Richard to follow, but I'm sure Richard will be man enough for the job. Um, so thank you very much, Peter. I am confident that you will be a representative of Monmouthshire and you will um, represent the people of this county to your very best of your abilities. You've always been a very liberally minded Conservative and so I look forward to still being able to work with you in your future role. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Councillor Watkins. Uh, just as uh, just as chairman, I'll take chairman's prerogative then to say uh, my thanks to Peter as well, because uh, he has been a huge inspiration to me as a new councillor coming in. Um, and to echo what everyone else has already said, um, there's there's a, a, a real decency about Peter, uh, which uh, which is very core cool to his uh, being. And you don't very often see that, um, but it shines and it shines beyond the uh, bandwidth of political parties. So. Uh, from me personally to you, Peter, congratulations on a new role, and it is a bittersweet position, as Bob said, um, but uh, we, we wish you all the very best in your future role. Thank you. Um, moving on then to agenda uh, item eight, representations of political groups. Chair, Chair, Chairman, could I, could I respond to some of those points yes, briefly? Of course, Peter, of course you may. 
Um, yeah, uh, 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 I'll probably get upset during this, so apologise in, in advance. Um, this is a day I've been uh, dreading um, as it sort of closes a, a huge chapter in my life. Uh, time that I've enjoyed every minute of actually and it, I'm, I'm, I'm glad in a way that I've had something to occupy my mind somewhere else for the last couple of days because I've been anxious about today because uh, you know it was such a it's quite feels a bit final you know even though you haven't got rid of me yet because I'm going to be sitting in the back benches for for 12 months but yes Bob you know, I, I, I thank you, Bob, as well, and thank you, Richard, uh, the things you said, and Simon and, and Joe. Uh, I, I can't respond to them here uh, sufficiently, uh, but you know how I feel. It all started, uh, as Bob said, 1997, November 97. I was, I was uh, elected in a by-election. I hadn't got a clue what I was doing. Uh, I was, uh, you know, just a, just a farmer. Um, and uh, I didn't think then what what uh, um, what you know what lay ahead of me or what I might be gonna do. Uh, I remember a day back, um, and Peter Clark will know this, and a couple of others. I remember a day back in 2000, it was, and it was in the library at the Glenaravon, and that's where we used to have our clandestine group meetings in those days. You know when we did our uh, planning. Uh, and of what have you, and the uh, the then leader, it was Colin White at the time. Uh, he, I remember, I could see it just clearly. He said to me, and he hadn't consulted any of us. He said, Peter, I, I want you to take on the role of cabinet member for lifelong learning. And like that was a big role, you know, for education, cabinet member for education. I mean, what am, I'm one of the most uneducated people in the council. And why was he he giving me, uh, you know, uh, that role? I, I think I actually almost fell off my chair. I was certainly faint because, uh, you know, as I said, I was just a dairy farmer. I didn't really know much about education. But uh, um, as Bob's sort of alluded to, yeah, we had a, a busy time. Uh, for for many years and uh, and we did it in partnership politically and we opened a lot of new schools and we closed schools sadly but the needs of the learner were always our driver and um, and we you know it was important we did that and hopefully the communities our children now are benefiting from uh, those decisions but 2008 May 2008 when the uh, when we had that AGM that was probably the biggest day for me it was a a huge privilege uh, to be leader as Richard was feeling today I I know and it's always been a privilege every year because we we're re-elected each year and I've never taken the, the job uh, for granted I've worked with some of the most brilliant people over the years especially within in the cabinet and you know all have been truly wonderful I have to say that and the cabinet has changed a few times uh, but my teams have always been fantastic and I think the team Rich has laid out today is going to be fantastic with some new dynamics in it and and I wish them uh, all well but I have to mention two individuals as as they have been with me from the beginning and Bob's already alluded to this and Bob was one of them and uh, and Phil Murphy has been the other one and uh, you know I couldn't have led this uh, authority um, in the way I have without their huge support their dedication their friendship and their professionalism and I thank both of them most sincerely I've been blessed with uh, having the support of a a marvellous group and that's been consistent for for many years they are uh, more than just colleagues they're all my friends and uh, my thanks go to them and I've had the pleasure of working with uh, oh, so many members over the years and everybody has brought something to the council and together you know we've uh, actually made this council the best council in Wales and I absolutely know that I absolutely know that uh, it's been, uh, you know, it's a fantastic place. Um, uh, there's one special lady, I hope she's watching, 
um, today that has supported me through my 13 years in office and she's just been magnificent and uh, I couldn't speak today without mentioning her and that's Linda Greer, uh, my secretary and PA and she is just truly one of the most excellent members of staff. She has done so much for me uh, that you know it's just a huge amount. I definitely couldn't have I couldn't have done my job without her and I can't explain how important she has been uh, to me. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Linda. And uh, I've said many times uh, in, uh, as a leader over the years that we are blessed with the most fantastic people who work for us uh, in this council. And we must never forget that because it's their hard work and, and public service that makes this council what it is. And my thanks go to each and every one of them and uh, to all of you out there. You just do a brilliant job and I'm so proud to have been able to lead the organisation with such people uh, amongst us. And uh, But one relationship in the council which is so important and it's one and that's the one between the leader and the chief executive. And I have had the absolute honour of working with Paul for probably well, it must be 11 years now, Paul, I expect, uh, and, uh, if not more. And I would say, and again, I, I, I think I know, he's probably the best chief exec in Wales. And I'm not exaggerating. There's chief execs, there are leaders, there are officers around Wales who look to Paul for guidance, for direction, for thought leadership, for so many things. He's an outstanding uh, individual. Uh, Paul, I thank you so much for your advice guidance, support, professionalism. I couldn't have wished for a better chief exec to work with uh, for, for virtually all of my leadership career. So I'm sorry to go on so long, Chairman, but 13 years holds a, a lot of thoughts and memories and perhaps I ought to capture them all in a, a book one day. I could write a book about some things over the years I've seen. I tell you what, there's been, a, uh, some, been some laughs and there's been some really interesting things I've seen. Uh, I've seen so many staff for come and go through different roles and um, I've worked with so many ministers at different roles and they've come and go and uh, I've seen the council evolve from one stage in its existence to another and I've seen how it's uh, you know it's changed uh, uh, through that that period. Um, so uh, I think I'll end soon, Chairman, by wishing our new leader, his cabinet and our senior leadership team the very best as they focus hard on the recovery and take us out of, uh, you know, into the into the new world. And I thank you all members. And I know we have a bit of theatre at times and some of I know I get on some of your nerves, but uh, uh, on, on the whole, I think we've worked generally well together to represent the people of Monmouthshire and I really appreciate everything all of you have done and those who've gone before us over the years. So now I will join the back benches and I'll shut up and um, uh, at the same time I'll start a new chapter in my life um, down at the Senate. So you haven't quite got rid of me yet Mr Chairman but uh, I'll always be there if anybody needs me or just wants a a word or bounce anything off me. So uh, can I just thank you all again for your kind words. I'm, I'm really quite blown away by it. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Peter. Thank you very much for that. Um, I don't think there's anything more to say really. So we'll move on to uh, agenda item eight, uh, representations of political groups, which, uh, which Matt Phillips will take for us. Matt. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good afternoon, councillors, again. Um, yeah, blimey. The, following on from some of the quite momentous things that have happened this afternoon and the incredible words we've heard, I'm afraid you're going to have to listen to a lawyer talk about numbers for a couple of minutes. So I do apologise because it's, a, it's not a particularly nice change of tone, is it? But um, this is the representation of uh, political bodies uh, paper. It's the one that's bought uh, in the uh, in, in the AGM uh, every year. Um, <clears throat> to make it simple, uh, it is the same uh, calculation and report that was carried out at the last AGM. There's been no changes in terms of uh, groups uh, and and the balance calculations. So effectively, uh, I won't take you uh, through the report in any detail. Uh, very simply, the request for me is that you. Um, 
uh, or the recommendation is that you approve the report as written, which sets out the balance and the allocation of seats per group. And it's just a reminder following the council decision in September 2019 that two of the planning seats have been allocated to the Conservatives and the Labour group accordingly in accordance with the decision taken by council uh, back in September 2019. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matt. Uh, do we have any comments or questions? Can I move both re uh, the reports or all? If not, I'd like to move to the vote. So we could have a vote to accept that, please. We'll just wait a few moments for that to come into the chat bar. Okay, members, that's up. Okay, thank you, members. We've got 34 responses. Um, uh, Councillor Watts, I understand you're on your phone. Have you been able to vote? If not, I would take that as uh, as as unanimous. Um, and so I'm happy for us to move on with that, Matt. Okay, thank you. So thank you very much, members. Uh, moving on then to agenda item number nine, appointments to committees. We're going to ask Councillor John. Thank you, sir. This report seeks to confirm the membership of the Council's committees and their terms of reference for the forthcoming Council year in John. accordance. You're, you're on mute, Richard. Ah, sorry. No, I can hear him. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear, I can hear you, you. Uh, Councillor John. You're not on mute. Yeah, I can hear you as well. This report seeks to confirm the membership of the council me, committees. Just, can, just one can second. You hear me, okay, sir. Phillips, Matt Phillips, will come to you. A number of members have said they can hear me. Okay, yeah. well, uh, yeah, we can we can hear you fine, Rich. It's Matt who can't hear you. Right. Okay. <laughs> I don't know where to look now. <laughs> um, this. Right. I'll I'll look at this one. Otherwise, I can be okay. looking in, in both directions. Um, this report seeks to confirm the membership of the Council's committees and their terms of reference for the forthcoming Council year in accordance with the Council's constitution. The report also highlights that it's the responsibility of the Council to appoint the chair of the Democratic Services Committee. Unless a member wishes to, um, to speak specifically on the appointments or the committee structure, can I recommend that group leaders email uh, Democratic Services uh, to confirm their appointments to each committee and that we move to receiving nominations for the role of Chair of Democratic Services Committee, please. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any comments or questions? Chair, may I um, move to um, propose Councillor David Jones as Chairman of uh, Democratic Services Committee, please? Do you have a seconder for that? Seconded. Oh, sorry, Joe. <laughs> I would also like to second it. Thanks. Yeah, just to give him the opportunity to complete his 12 months. OK, thank you. Do we have any other nominations for the post? Yes, Chair. Can I nominate Councillor Dave Evans? Sorry, my hand thing is not working. Yeah. Judy Thomas, can I second that nomination, please? 
OK, thank you. Do we have any further nominations? If not, can I ask Democratic Services for us to to go to the vote with that, please? Yeah, okay, that should be in your chat bar or on the mid middle of your screen to vote, please. So I'll just wait a few moments for that to make sure we got everyone's votes in. Mm. <laughs> mm. I'll just ask um I'll just ask our monitoring officer. I'll just ask our monitor officer to come in, Matt Phillips. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, um, so we should have 42 members attending 17 votes. So, so I'm just going to ask if we're just. Sorry, Matt. Yeah, sorry, Matt. Yeah. I can't hear you properly. You're echoing no, quite badly. Hit, hit, um, 22. Um, Matt, you're on it in slow mo now at the moment. I'm just going to pause for long, but just if I have another vote. Uh, Matt, Matt, I'm sorry, we can't hear you. I think there's too many microphones on where you are, so nobody was able to hear what you said. I just checked it. Right. I'm going to attempt to speak again. Yeah. Can, can everyone hear me? No, it's, it's too echoey. Maybe um, if the chairman's microphone is on as well, is that affecting you? Okay. Can you just Yeah. <clears throat> just bear with the numbers. So councillors, um, hopefully you can hear me now as we do our slight wacky races here in musical chairs and socially distancing all the time as well. Excellent. So what I was just saying is, uh, by my count, we have 42 councillors in attendance today. And I'm conscious that some people may have phoned in. Uh, at the moment, I can see 38 responses. So can I just ask everyone to try um, clicking on their vote function for a second time? It's not gonna mess the vote up. It will only count you once. If we're still struggling to hit the required number of votes, then I'm going to ask uh, Nicola to go through a, um, a recorded vote process. It won't be an actual recorded vote, but it'll be the assembly style um, asking for people to vote in that manner. So at the moment, I can still see 38 responses. If, if I can ask everyone to, to try to vote again. Chair, I th uh, Matt, I think Armand's struggling as well. OK, it, se it seems we're stuck at 38 and it could be that the way the, the, the technology works, it could be that we've um, that some members have dropped out. So what I'm going to ask now is for uh, Nick Perry to to call it out and ask for verbal responses uh, from each member of the council. Of course, if we are still in a position where we've satisfied ourselves as to who is in attendance and everyone has voted and it's a tie, then the rules are, of course, that the casting vote would sit with the chair. So Nicola, if I can hand over to you, please. Thanks, Matt. OK, so I'll just go through the list. Bear with me. OK, can, so. Um, and now for sorry, whatever Matt, reason. Um, 
um, we can't hear Nicola either. So clearly, there's there's some sort of disruption. Sorry, Matt, we can. Can hear. We can hear. We can hear. Try taking the headphones out, Nicola, and see if that works. No, no, we can. We can. can, we can, can, we can. can. Oh, you can. Perfectly clear. Apologies. Right, ignore me. Carry on, Nick. Um. So, are members happy to just call out the name of who they want to vote for? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Right, Councillor Petruni. Councillor Dave Evans, please, Nick. Councillor Becker. <laughs> Councillor Becker. <laughs> Councillor Blakeborough. Uh, Councillor Dave Jones, please. Councillor Louise Brown. Councillor David Jones, please. Councillor Clark. Uh, David Evans, please. Councillor Davis. David Evans, please. <clears throat> Councillor Chris Edwards. Councillor David Jones, please. Councillor Councillor Dimmock. Councillor Jones, please. Councillor Eason. Councillor Eason. He's had to leave, I think, uh, Nicola. OK, I'll come back anyway. Councillor Ruth Edwards. Councillor David Evans. Um, Councillor Evans. Councillor Feekins. Councillor David Jones. Councillor Fox. Councillor David Jones. Councillor Greenland. Councillor Evans. Councillor Grauket. David Evans. Councillor Guppy. Councillor David Jones, please. Councillor Harris. David Evans. Councillor Higginson. Hello, Nicola. Oh, hi. <laughs> Councillor Eason. <laughs> Hello, you Nicola. No, hi. Nicola. Uh, Go on, Councillor Eason, David. I'll take your vote. Hello, Nicola. Hi. <laughs> I'm on the middle of the phone to my bank. I just had a, I just had a scam on my bank card. Can I vote for Dave Evans, please? Certainly, I might like that down. Right, I got, okay. I got to leave you, leave you again. All right? Yeah, sure. sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Higginson. Councillor David Evans. That's okay. I'm, I'm in the middle of a council meeting. I thought I better get this moving as well. But, <laughs> right. But I'm, I'm okay now for the time being. Mute. Okay. I just need to meet. Oh, I think that's done. Okay, um, Councillor Howard. Dave Evans. <coughs> Councillor Howarth. Councillor Jones. Councillor John. Councillor David Jones. <coughs> Councillor David Jones. This is not a scam, David Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Laura Jones. <laughs> Councillor Penny Jones. <coughs> um, Councillor David Evans, please. Councillor Sarah Jones. Councillor Jones, please. <laughs> Councillor Jordan. Dick Jones. Councillor Lane. Dave Jones. Councillor Murphy. Dave Evans. Councillor Pavia. Councillor David Jones. Councillor Powell. Councillor David Evans. Councillor Pratt. Councillor David Evans. Councillor Roden. Councillor David Jones, please. 
Councillor Smith. Councillor David Jones. Councillor Strong. Councillor David Evans. Councillor Taylor. Councillor Taylor. Councillor Thomas. Uh, David Evans. Councillor Watts. Apologised. He's apologised. OK. Councillor Watkins. Councillor Jones. Councillor Webb. Councillor David Evans. Councillor Williams. Councillor David Evans. And Councillor Woodhouse. Councillor David Evans. OK, thank you. Um, so just to go back, Councillor Becker. No, I'm just going to go in and unmute. Members, just be with us while we work out the vote. Councillor, um, oh yeah, sure. Councillor Evans, did you put your vote in? Uh, yes, I did. Right, I'll just mark that down. Okay. Um, Chairman, the monitor officer has counted and the majority is for Councillor Evans. Thank, thank you very much, Nicola. Uh, thank you, Matt, as well. And thank you, members, for going through that process um, uh, and for bearing with us with uh, with uh, the technology. Uh, thank you very much to all those. Um, with that, um, I believe we're good to move on to agenda item number nine. Um, that is number 10, sorry, appointments to outside bodies. Thank you. I hope you can hear me OK. So similarly to the previous report considered, the council is required to appoint members to outside bodies to ensure the council has a voice and is represented on various organisations. Um, last year's appointment schedule is attached um, for the outside bodies uh, is attached to the report. Um, now, I would like to propose uh, some some changes if if that's OK. Um, now, <coughs> largely due to the, um, the very sad loss of our, of our, our very dear friend, Councillor David Dovey. Um, sh shall I run through them, Mr Chairman? Please, if that's OK. So, um, category A, number three, Oldbury Power Station Stakeholder Group. I would like to propose Councillor Matt Feekins uh, to replace Councillor David Dovey. Um, I would like to propose under number six, Natural Resources Wales uh, Advisory Group. I would like to propose Councillor Jamie Trahan uh, to replace Councillor Laura Jones. Um, Richard, number could 13. There, could you stop there, Richard? Could you confirm Councillor Higginson for the one year on number five? Do you want me to run through the Conservative nominations? No, just, OK, carry on. OK, I, I'm sorry, I lost you just now. I've suddenly scanned my bank and I've, uh, I'm just back with you now. OK. What we'll do, what, Richard, what we'll do, tone, tone, Councillor Eason, if it's OK, we'll we'll go through the Conservative nominations. 
if there are no challenges to those, then, well, then looking at all the nominations, there's only one change for the for the full term of council. Uh, for the one is that one year or one other than that? I don't see any changes for Labour. Okay, can we, we'll do. We'll ask Councillor John to go through his list first, and then if if you if you wish to come in after that, we'll come in. We'll come to you afterwards if that's okay. Right. Okay, fine. Thank you, Councillor John. Okay. Chair, thank you. Chair, before Councillor John goes on, could could you excuse me? I I have to another appointment now at four o'clock. Apologies, excepted. Thank you, Councillor Evans. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor John. I'm shocked it ever be said I go on. <laughs> um, number 13, Y Valley Area of Outstanding Natural Beauty Joint Committee. Um, I'd like to propose Councillor Christopher Edwards in place of Councillor David Dovey and Councillor Matt Feekins in place of Laura Jones. Number 19, Reserve Forces and Cadets Association for Wales. I'd like to propose Councillor Lisa Dimmock. 22, as our scrutiny champion, I'd like to propose Councillor Anne Webb. And I'd also like to add an additional body, number which I'd, I'd like to number 25, the uh, Living Levels Partnership Board. I would like to propose Councillor Lisa Dimmock and Councillor Jane Pratt. I have no changes to propose to category B. On category C, number three, an Arin Bevan Local Health Board Stakeholder Reference Group. I would like to propose Councillor Christopher Edwards to replace Councillor Paul Pavia. Number five, Education Achievement Service. I would like to propose the Cabinet Member for Education, Paul Pavia, to replace Richard John. And number eight, Apprentice. I would like to propose Councillor Sarah Jones. I have no changes to propose to category D. Category E, number 15, the Pratt's Charity in Mathen. I would like to propose Councillor Phil Murphy. Um, Councillor Louise Brown was appointed last year. Um, and one final change, which is category F. As the local authorities armed forces champion, I would like to nominate County Councillor Lisa Dimmock. Those are Thank the concerns very, nominations, sir. Thank you very much, Councillor John. Do we have Chair, any? May I ask a question of clarity there from Richard John? Um, on category A, uh, did you say number twenty-two, Richard? And did you did you could you just say that again, please? Yeah, so number 22, which is the Scrutiny, Scrutiny Champions Wales Network. Um, I would like to propose Councillor Anne Webb for that position, please. I think I'm looking at an outdated uh, version, Richard. It says Fostering Champion, my number 22. I'm probably looking at an outdated version. That was just hence a bit of confusion. I've got Fostering Panel 24, which is Councillor Harris. Yeah, I, got, I think I've got an outdate, outdated version. Um, Chair, can I come in there on? Yeah, Councillor uh, Harris, uh, yeah, please. Um, I am uh, out of time on on that. In that, uh, two members of the uh, fostering panel did much more than uh, service, and they should have done, and were uh, um, asked politely yeah. and and thankfully uh, to stand uh, down for that reason uh, it's no longer a requirement for a county councillor to be um, on that um, panel anymore so um, whether or not we wish to uh, nominate somebody else and uh, they can take their chances is obviously up to the uh, uh, the council but uh, i no longer am a, a, a member and as i say uh, no county councillor needs to be a member thank you chair OK, thank you. Will I nominate Armand Watts for that then, Chair? Councillor Tony Eason nominating Armand Watts. Councillor Watts. Yeah, OK. What we'll, I'm just taking some guidance and I think we will we'll review that situation after Council. Just okay. so, that we, no know, so that we can have a better idea of what it, where it is. No problems. Thank you. Are there any other um, uh, comments or questions regarding the Conservative nominations? If not, I'll move to the vote on block. Can you um, then go back to item five first, Chair? I made the, the one comment from us. Um, sorry, Chair, I can't find a hand, but um, 
there are two county councillors for the Pratt charity, myself and Councillor Murphy, and it wasn't clear that um, uh, basically there was uh, Councillor Murphy um, nominated on top of myself. Thank you. OK, again, I think we'll, we'll have to get some clarity. OK. Councillor John, can you clarify your intention in that regard? Yeah, so category E number 15, Pratt's Charity Mathen. Uh, we don't need to nominate Councillor Louise Brown because she was nominated on the 10th of September 2020 for a four year term. Um, but we do need to nominate Councillor Phil Murphy um, for the Pratt's Charity, in addition to Councillor Louise Brown, who is one year into a four year term. Thank you, thank you very much for that clarity. Councillor Eason, can I just ask you to come back on your point, please? Yeah, just the only one point in there is point five on category A. Joint Council for Wales is for one year. I want to reaffirm Councillor Higginson for another year. As well, as well as you need to put your nominee forward, which is Councillor Murphy. OK, are you, uh, Councillor John, can I just ask if that's in line with your thinking? I presume yes. it's Councillor Murphy. Yes, it's Councillor yeah. Phil Murphy. And okay. Councillor Higginson. And so Councillor Higginson will be will, will go forward for a further term. Yeah. For a further year. One for year. Further year, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, on that basis, are we happy then uh, to move forward uh, on and vote on block? I'm happy. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. We haven't sorry, it's Councillor Harris. No, we haven't had any any um sorry. Uh, Chair, yeah, go on. I haven't got my hand. If I've got my hand up, I shouldn't have. Let's put it that way. So. OK, go on then. Please speak. OK, well, we'll ask um, Democratic Services to go to the vote on this then, to vote on block. Just wait a few moments for us, please. Okay, thank you. If there's a few members who've dropped out, um, but the the vote is overwhelmingly in favour. Uh, so we'll take that as accepted. So thank you very much, everyone, for your input there. Um, we'll move on then to agenda item 11, um, which is the Freedom of the Borough, the Royal British Legion, uh, which Councillor Laura Jones will take for us. Councillor Jones. Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? Yeah. In light of the British Legion's centenary celebrations, it gives me enormous pleasure in my final act as our county, uh, as our county's Monmouthshire Arms Forces champion, to be able to recognise the work of the British Legion on our council's behalf. For a hundred years, the British Legion has been a symbol of hope for the British Arms Forces community. We have seen your passion for bringing people together to support, commemorate and celebrate our arms forces. And we see your passion and dedication to continue your mission of creating better futures for those who have served and their families. As a county and as a county council who is keen to support our uh, servicemen, women and families in any which way we can, we are so thankful for the key role that you play in supporting our armed forces community and championing remembrance today. After the British Legion was formed 100 years ago, members organised themselves into local branches and this system is still in place today. With a footprint um, in almost every town and village across Monmouthshire, Wales and our United Kingdom, the Royal British Legion branches are ideally placed to spot people who really need support locally and bring them to the attention of us as councillors and local welfare staff, which is where our missions to support our armed forces family combine. Your members also play an important part, an important role in helping younger generations understand remembrance. Your youth, um, are, your youth are our future, and our, our, the youth are our future, and our custodians of remembrance. And thanks to your work on passing on the torch of remembrance to future generations, they too now will ensure 
that all those who have served and sacrificed on our behalf get the fair treatment and recognition that they deserve. I for one, and I know many other councillors too, know many people from the British Legion uh, in our own patches of Monmouthshire. Their kind, caring dedication to help others is always very apparent and has not been unnoticed or unappreciated. It is to this end that as a county council, we'd like to honour your work, the centenary of your highly respected organisation, and thank you by offering you the freedom of the borough. Thank you very much, Councillor Jones. Uh, and thank you, sir. And so we will um, uh, do all, everything that is necessary to move that forward. Thank you very much. Um, with that, um, I'm happy to move on to uh, agenda item 12, 12.1, uh, where we have members' questions. We've got a question from Councillor Martin Grocott to Councillor uh, Bob Greenland. Uh, Councillor Grocott, are you happy for me to take that as presented and as read? and for you to then come back with the supplementary afterwards. Indeed, if I could just explain that it was originally asked for last month's County Council that was cancelled, which is why it looks slightly out of place here. That uh, yes, as, as in the papers, Mr Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Groker. Councillor Greenland, are you with us still? Uh, I am Chair, but uh, with the change of portfolios, uh, this is now passed over to Councillor Sarah Jones, so Sarah is going to take uh, the answer for that, if that's okay with you. Absolutely fine. Councillor Jones. Thanks, Chair. Um, and, and thank you very much, uh, Councillor Grocott, for your questions. Um, whilst clearly you addressed this to the economy portfolio holder, of course, that is now me. Um, in terms of actually my experience of knowledge in these areas, it's something that I've had a real keen interest over the last four years, given the clear link with the social justice agenda. And I'm really to work and to the, the skills at work banner as well. It's really important to me and it will be going forward. And it's one of the reasons. And then in March around adult employability. And I know you attended those seminars and asked a number of really pertinent questions. And um, I think it was of the work of the team of Hannah and the employability and skills team. Now, I won't give you a lengthy outline of the benefits of those programmes. Clearly, you are very well aware of what those are, otherwise you wouldn't have asked the question in the first place. In terms of that gap in funding and what we're going to try and do to ensure that we have sustainability of these projects going forward. Well, the gap in funding, the match funding that we have is around just over 300,000. So that's the figure we are going to be working towards at the end of these programmes. Um, and we've been identifying ways to try and ensure that gap is filled. This work has been going on for the last 12 months and it's something that we're very much attuned to um, and we're working very proactively on. So we're carrying out local evaluations of the projects themselves. We're looking at how we can learn best practice, work with stakeholders and partners, ensure that where things have worked really well, we amplify them. Um, and other areas where we might see some partnership working and collaboration, we can streamline things in that sense to make it more efficient and effective. We're working with our 10 local authorities across the Cardiff Capital Region to develop um, new delivery models. And of course, we're looking at exploring um, funding opportunities. And as part of that, we're clearly preparing for UK shared prosperity um, funding and trying to allocate that for the longevity of these programmes and, and beyond. And um, finally, just to say that um, we're putting forward part of a regional bid for um, community renewal funding. Um, Torvine are going to be lead authority on that um, and we're, we're working hard with them on that piece of work. So just to summarise, um, if we're going to be successful in ensuring these programmes continue, and I very much want them to, um, we need to ensure that all levels of government work together here. And um, we know the challenges that these schemes have been set up to address. They stem from national challenges, so clearly it's going to need intervention at a national level to help support the delivery of these programmes. And so we'll do our very best, Councillor Grocott. Um, you know that, you know I've got a real passion for this area and I know how positive these programmes are. We know there's vast benefits and I'll ensure that I'll keep you updated as we monitor the progress and um, hopefully have another seminar in the autumn. So I think that was an action from the seminar we had in March. So we can keep you updated on how things progress. And very finally, just thank you to Hannah and to all the employability and skills team. They've done some great work, particularly in the challenging times of COVID. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Jones. 
Councillor Groker, do you have a supplementary question? Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah. Um, uh, thank you very much for, for that answer, uh, Councillor Jones. Uh, it seems to me that um, so far the hopes for maintaining the provision uh, seems to be based on the shared prosperity fund. Uh, but I am anxious that um, we might not replace like with like. And, and as you know, we have some really skilled and effective workers working with some of our most challenging young people and delivering the Inspire programme. Uh, and I'd like your assurance that if possible, the projects will continue as closely as, as they uh, operate at present uh, as we move forward and that you will do everything in your powers to ensure that we do not lose the expertise that I know our four comprehensive schools really value in that joint provision of, of these schemes for some of our young people. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Joker. Uh, Councillor Jones, do you want to come back? Yeah, thank you, Chair. And if I may, I'm absolutely Councillor Grocourt. I, mean, I think the experience of that team and themselves, over 20 in that team that deliver um, some fantastic support across those employability programmes, um, we can't underestimate the benefits that they bring, particularly to our young people and to those four secondary schools. Um, we will do all we can. Um, as I mentioned, we are looking and evaluating the programmes. There might be opportunities for us to tweak them and do things a bit differently if we can access that funding. But you have my assurance that we'll do all that we can um, to deliver and continue those programmes um, as they as they currently are, um, given the huge benefits that they bring to our communities. Thank you, Councillor Jones. Um, and uh, forgive me, everyone, uh, but we just need to go back to uh, item 11. We need to vote on item 11, the freedom of the borough. Um, and so I'm going to ask Democratic Services to put that into the chat bar now, if that's OK. This is for us to accept, to, to, to us giving the freedom of the borough. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Chairman. We've had over 32 responses now and, and all unanimously in favour. So thank you very much all for that. Um, moving on then to agenda item 13, which is to confirm the minutes of the meeting of the County Council held on the 11th of March 2021. They were circulated with the pack. Does anyone have any comments? Happy to move, Chair. Is there a seconder for that? I'll second that, Councillor Powell. OK, thank you. OK, that's all been noted, everyone. Thank you very much. And so um, just very quickly uh, fr from me to say thank you very much to everyone for bearing with us in uh, in this in my first meeting. Very large pair of shoes that I also have to fill with our outgoing chair. Um, and I'm deeply grateful to her and her support and also the previous chairs uh, to uh, which through their assistance to uh, to enable me to move forward today. So thank you very much to those chairs. And we're moving now into uh, item 14. Uh, and ask members to stay logged on and we shall go into a confidential uh, session uh, where we exclude the press and public. So if members can stay with us and we shall stop the recording.